Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to look at our gospel lesson, Matthew chapter 4. In our text, Jesus has left Nazareth and moved to Capernaum. There, Jesus called Simon, Andrew, James, and John to follow him. Matthew says, Jesus went all over Galilee. He taught in synagogues and spread the good news of the kingdom. He also cured every disease and sickness among the people. This is Jesus acting the way that we sometimes wish he would act today. He moves among the people, telling the good news and acting with power, curing every disease, every sickness among the people. I tell you, that would be the answer to a pastor's dreams. Instead of telling people that this is a fallen world with lots of bad things happening and that there's no way out of them until we get called home, there would be healing and things that were wrong would be made right. Even if it was a temporary fix, people would really like it. If Jesus were working in his church the way we find him working in the text, curing all sicknesses and illnesses, we'd have to expand here at Christ Lutheran. But Jesus was doing even more. Jesus was preaching the good news. The good news that God was acting to save all people from their sins. That God was making a way for all people to be forgiven. Jesus was not only the healer of bodies, he is the healer of souls. He is the one who heals the rift between us and God, our Father. Wouldn't it be great to see Jesus working among his people? Well, Jesus is. Jesus is working here at Christ Lutheran. Here, Jesus comes to us in word and sacrament, and he gives us the most powerful medicine ever thought of. It's a medicine that takes away guilt, pain, hard feelings. More than that, it takes away sin and death. It is the medicine of the gospel of forgiveness. And it's healing for our whole body, our whole person. And that is good news because we are running out of time. The clock is running on every evil and good thing in our lives. This too shall pass is what I often encourage others to hold on to. Hold on. That evil thing will eventually lose its grip on you. And unfortunately, so will those good things that you love. Life marches towards the finish line where we will leave just the way we came in. No U-Hauls required. And we will be home because we are healed by the gospel of forgiveness in Christ. We are made new people, forgiven people, loved people. The grace of God, the forgiveness of Christ, is what Christianity is all about. Forgiveness brings healing new life, and hope for tomorrow. And we are told to give this medicine to others and to forgive as we have been forgiven. Let's talk about that a little this morning. Forgive as we have been forgiven. That sounds hard. And it is. John Vodder says, extending mercy, forgiveness, doesn't always bring peace. Even when it does, the peace process is seldom easy. It's not easy 
letting go of past hurts. It's not easy asking forgiveness and it is not easy extending it. It takes time and energy and it often takes a toll on us emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And yet, that is what Jesus calls on us to do. Not an easy thing, a difficult thing. Once upon a time, there were two brothers who lived on adjoining farms, and they had a fight. It was the first serious rift in 40 years of farming side by side, sharing machinery and trading labor and goods without a hitch. But it all fell apart. It began with a small misunderstanding and it grew into a major difference. And finally it exploded into an exchange of bitter words followed by weeks of silence. One morning there was a knock on the older brother's door. He opened it to find a man with a carpenter's toolbox. I'm looking for a few days of work, the man said. Perhaps you'd have a few small jobs here and there. Could I help you? Yes, said the older brother. I do have a job for you. Look across the creek at that farm. That's my neighbor. In fact, it's my younger brother. Last week there was a meadow between us and he took his bulldozer to the river levee and now there's a creek between us. Well, he may have done that to spite me, but I'll go him one better. See that pile of lumber curing by the barn? I want you to build me a fence, an eight-foot fence, so I don't need to look at his place anymore. That'll show him. The carpenter said, I think I understand the situation. Show me the nails and the post hole digger and I'll be able to do a job that pleases you. The older brother had to go into town for supplies, so he helped the carpenter get the materials ready and then he was off for the day. The carpenter worked hard all that day measuring, sawing, nailing. About sunset, when the farmer returned, the carpenter had just finished his job. The farmer's eyes opened wide. His jaw dropped. There was no fence there at all. It was a bridge. A bridge stretching from one side of the creek to the other. A fine piece of work, handrails and all. And the neighbor, his younger brother, was coming across, his hand extended and outreached. Hard to believe you would build this bridge after all I've said and done. The two brothers met in the middle of the bridge, taking each other's hand. They turned to see the carpenter hoist his toolbox onto his shoulder. Now wait, stay a few days. I've got other projects for you, said the older brother. I'd love to stay on the carpenter said, but I have so many more bridges to build. It's a lot easier to build a wall than it is to build a bridge. I mean, even as carpenter challenged as I am, I think I could build a wall, but it would take training and patience to help me build a bridge. Jesus can help us build bridges of forgiveness to others so that we can find healing like those brothers in the story and we can find release from the prison of unforgiven sins. Still, there's a lot of confusion about what forgiveness is and how it works. I like what Rose Sweet writes. Forgiveness is not letting the offender off the hook. We can and should still hold others accountable for their actions or lack of actions. Forgiveness is simply returning to God the right to take care of justice. 
by refusing to allow God to punish or revenge the wrongs done on us, we're telling God we don't trust him to take care of matters. And so forgiveness is not letting the offense reoccur again and again. We don't have to tolerate, nor should we keep ourselves open to, lack of respect or any form of abuse. And forgiveness does not mean that we have to revert to being the victim. Forgiveness is not saying, what you did was okay, so go ahead and walk all over me. Forgiveness is not the same also as reconciliation and reconciling. We can forgive someone even if we never can get along with them again. And finally, forgiveness is a process. It's not an event. It might take some time to work through our emotional problems before we can truly forgive. Forgiveness unlocks healing for our souls so that we can move on and we can live today instead of living in the past and letting the past dominate us. So in a very real way, the gift that Christ brings to us every Sunday here at Christ Lutheran is so much more powerful than the healing he was doing in Galilee. The forgiveness that Christ gives us here heals our whole person. It gives us release from guilt and shame. It gives us eternal life. It makes us children of the Heavenly Father. And then, in the way that God always works, He uses us. In this freedom of forgiveness, we are able to forgive others. Not to allow them to hurt us more, but rather to heal the wounds that they have given us. To set ourselves free from the resentment and anger, the guilt and pain that they have caused us. To release it and give it to Christ and to move on. To forgive as we have been forgiven. So, Jesus wants to teach us to build bridges, not walls. Bridges of forgiveness and hope. And so, the final line in our text, that line is still happening today. And Jesus cured them all. Praise and thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.